Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear workshop. My name is Pat Bear. Uh, this is my uh, Twitch series where I build uh, Gunpla, uh, model kits, and also Lego. We're working on a perfect grade of a uh, model kit from uh, Gundam Wing, the Wing Gundam Zero Custom, which is a mouthful. So we're just been saying Wing Gundam perfect grade. Um, waiting for a few more folks to join us here. Uh, hello to uh, Johnny and Waffles. Uh, thank you for joining me here in the chat. I'll wait for a few more folks to join us before we start getting to building. Um, I did want to show this off. I took a photo of this because I, uh, I was setting up earlier today. You know, getting my uh, everything in a line, making sure everything was ready. Do my testing, all that. Um, and, I, and I was like, this is a big arm. Like, this is a big big arm and I was wondering I'm like so this is 160 scale that's what perfect grade is 160 I was like how big is 1 100 so I went and got the same kit so this is a custom this is the endless walls version of the wing Gundam um, which I've built on stream in uh, master grade so here's the comparison that's the difference between these two kits it's the same arm coming on, you know, that we built. Obviously, there's a shoulder here, so you can do that if you want to really look at it. But that's that's what we're dealing with. This is 100 scale. This is 160 scale. Um, that's nonsense. Complete another nonsense. This is going to be one big bad robot when we're done. Um, so we did one arm. This is... I'm, this in we've done that we've done a few little pieces here for the shoulder because you do at the same time and we've done this part of the other arm so we're actually very close to being done with the other arm we'll get to that real quick today um, so we'll be able to start moving on to the next part but like this has been two two build streams was just doing this arm uh, it's a lot a lot of screws a lot of nuts and bolts a lot of plastic um, Johnny Six, we need to build a perfect grade at some point in my life, but that's years away. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, somebody made an animated GIF of me, uh, or not animated, it was a video, of me talking uh, about how, like, well, I'll never build one of those on the stream, ha, 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 because I just never thought it would happen. Uh, this is only the second perfect grade I've ever built. Um, the first was the uh, Wing Gundam, but it was uh, years ago, and it, it's changed. It wasn't this version. So... All right, let's just get to building. People are going to come late. They got other things to do. You know, they'll they'll trickle in. I know 8 o'clock Eastern is early for some folks. So we'll uh, we'll get to going here. Let me uh, go over to the old main here. All right, so um, you can see all these. Uh, these are all the different uh, screws and uh, nuts and, and different things and uh, springs. Oh, God. I, I'm not looking forward to the spring part of it. Um, but yeah, we got our arm here that we built. We've got some shoulder pieces that we already pre-assembled um, because you did them at the same time. Uh, and we're going to continue building up this uh, arm here. Uh, I'm going to put this aside because I don't need that anymore. Yeah, perfect grades are expensive. Uh, this is a this hundred something dollar kit. that um, That's not just something I'm going to throw money at. But um, shout outs uh, to Steve Lynn. Uh, who purchased this? It was nonsense. He even had a gift wrapped, which was like such an extra nonsense step. Um, all right, let's see. We need F7 and F8, so let's clip those out. Got our snipper clips. Um, we've got a screwdriver. Uh, this is a Phillips screwdriver. We've got a flathead I'm using as a separator. I should just get a plastic separator like you use for phones. Uh, I keep forgetting to put that on my wish list. Uh, we'll talk about that later, the old Amazon wish list and all that. But yeah. We're here. We're doing well. Uh, so I have the worst. Yeah, so Johnny, I saw that on your um, Twitter. I, I didn't go too deep into the, the thread, but uh, something about one of your, um, the legs in your bed went through the floor in your bedroom. Um, so yeah, I saw that. That doesn't, that's not good. I, I don't know what happened, but... Uh, that sounds awful. I hope you're okay. I hope everybody's okay in your house. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's real bad. Um, that's that should not happen. You should be sleeping there, not you know, 
Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it seems real weird. Um, I don't think I've had that. I've had legs in my bed suddenly decide they didn't want to be like working properly um, as a big man. That has happened before where my bed suddenly decided it was like, oh, we're not going to work right. We're going to fall apart right now. I've had that before. All right, so let's put this on. I think I got these screwed up where they go. So we'll get this on. There's a bed leg shaped hole in the floor in the upstairs bedroom. That is rough, Johnny. Uh, that's real rough, and I'm sorry to hear that. Um, man. Yeah, that's real tough. Sorry. Uh, I hope that gets looked at and fixed and you get your whole you know, situation uh, like started and taken care of. Check all, check all the floor there. We started taking the bed apart enough that we could move it away from the hole so it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You gotta, gotta take the weight off that part of the room. Um, geez. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any similar experience to that. I don't, you know, um, that has not happened to me. But like I said, I did have a bed. I did have a bed, like, it was that really old, it was a very old bed, and it was a very old supports, and the supports decided they did not enjoy how much I weighed, and I would like, did the thing that I've kind of been afraid of as a large man, like, my mattress went through the frame, bed frame, to the floor, and that was like, not 100%, but like, some of it, and that was not cool. Let's see. Uh, then we just got the spare bed ready, and that point it was just too weak to sleep. Hanging out dark watching anime. I hear that. I've been there too. Yeah, we got some anime to talk about. We'll talk about some anime this uh, stream. Some very good stuff out there in the world of animation. Um, as always, I have a Crunchyroll account, so I talk about stuff on Crunchyroll. I'm sure there's other stuff out there that I haven't been watching because I don't have that. Because uh, I don't have other channels um, or other streams services uh because i know that like uh that seven deadly sins show is out i think on funimation um but it's not on uh crunchyroll uh that's that show i've never watched the first season but i've always watched clips of it and that seemed kind of cool um there's always a few shows out there that i'm just like nope no idea like uh iq holder uh there was a second season of that and i've watched the first season years ago and the second season came out, and it was like a different story, and like a different main character. And I was like, oh, but that not a grudge roll. So, not watching it. Uh, but then you work tomorrow, I was falling back to sleep. So she fell asleep. Good! I'm glad that she fell asleep. That's good. And I hope you get to get some sleep soon, buddy. Because that's, uh, that's real rough. All right, so uh, as always, if you are doing any building while while I am building, you know, send me photos. That happens. At, that can happen at any time, not just you know while I'm live. If you're ever working on stuff, feel free to send it to my Twitter account, uh, twitter.com/papbear. I always like to retweet and let people know what's up. Um, feels a little weird to be streaming today because normally on Thursday I'm like oh, I haven't streamed since Saturday. I can't wait to talk about everything that happened to me. Well, I streamed on Monday. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash patbear, you can see my first ever, uh, the archive of my games party stream. I did a Monday afternoon stream. It was uh, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we started a little late because things got out of hand and weird. Um, and uh, I'm not really great at the whole streaming thing when it comes to video games. But we got it going. Um, stream's up. So the archive is up of that. It was really fun. I uh, played some Hearthstone, showed off some stupid decks that I play for fun and wild in Hearthstone uh, that are not com competitive per se, but are very fun. And uh, yeah, it was really fun to play uh, stream and, and have people kind of hang out with me in that respect. That was very fun. I'm, uh, I'm going to do it again. The, the goal is to do that every month. Um, all right, so let's find O, found O. Uh, so that every month I'll do one of those streams. And we played some Jackbox. I uh, didn't have a lot of people in chat, so we couldn't do a... Um, that were interested in playing. So we couldn't do a super in-depth, um, like, really involved 
Like, uh, we didn't do Drawful because they're just like, Drawful is so much better when there's a ton of people. Um, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to build that. And it'll be a little bit more appointment uh, streaming. The people will be able to come and join me that more often if I do it monthly. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was really fun. Um, it was fun to show off. There were, there were at least a couple people in chat that had never seen Hearthstone before. So that was really fun to kind of show off a game that I really like uh, as far as card battles. And a few people that knew what I was up to with, as far as that goes. So that was, that was cool. And then... Uh, yeah, I had a few people that hadn't done Jackbox stuff before either, so that was very nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a good little turnout. I was very happy with that. Of course, talked about last Saturday. Last Saturday was interesting. I'll say that because it was one. Last Saturday was my fiftieth build stream, right? The five one, uh, which is kind of ridiculous that we got that high uh, in building. Um, uh, I was really, really proud of that. And we also, to celebrate our 50th, had our first nonsense jerks that I had to boot out of chat. Um, we had not had that before. Um, I've had some people who weren't sure why they were here and kind of expressed that, that were like clicking around things or had followed a retweet of that someone had sent out. So they were unsure what this was. Uh, but we've never had people who were just like here to be jerks until we kicked them out. Um, which is annoying. Uh, that that wasn't cool. Um, I hope they find their fun in some other way and they stop harassing people as their entertainment. But uh, it wasn't too bad and it was pretty quick and easy to get rid of them. Um, you know, I'd love to grow this channel out. Uh, don't get high and build gun put back. What? No. Oh, hi, Amaris. Hello, Amaris. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm happy to see you here in the chat. This is our Thursday night stream. Um, we're doing some Gunpla. Very excited about that. I'm working on our perfect grade Wing Gundam, as you can see from the photo directly below me. That's the artist interpretation of what we're building. Um, let's follow up. Previously, start shorter recruiting. The plastic on your Jeff Gersman fidget spinner is cracking. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, uh, Johnny, I'm going to go out and say that, in my opinion, I'm going to assume that those were not the highest quality of fidget spinners. I bet they didn't do a lot of research into different fidget spinner producers, and uh, there probably wasn't vigorous testing. It's mostly a lark, but you still want it to like not crack, and you want it to work. Amaris, um, yeah, I uh, I'm also looking forward to this. I, I showed this. I'm going to show you Amaris. Um, one, you're wonderful, and two, why not? It won't take long. So this is 160 scale, which is big. This is perfect grade, which is like the highest grade you can build. This is nonsense, but for comparison's sake, so this is 160. This is 100, which is normally the scale we build it. This is the same kit the same uh, uh gundam but just 160 and 100 so that this is going to be a very big big robot that's just to show you like i can't wait to finish this obviously we did one arm working on our second arm we're getting there but like whew, it is it is a process this is gonna be weeks and weeks which is great because i don't have to think about buying model kits i have a a few waiting in the wings for build a Three, yeah, three model kits waiting. So, yeah. Um, so this kit uh, can take its time. Let's see. So what I'm going to do here. Um, all right. So let's make sure that I'm doing this right. Uh, we built this ahead of time here. What do we got going on here? Uh, okay. Don't need that. Occasionally I'm getting notifications. Um Trying to get all my ducks in order here. So we built this stuff. Uh, some of these shoulder pieces we built on Saturday along with the other parts of our shoulder because it's easy to do that ahead of time. And now we have to build the hands and then we'll be done with our uh, other arm, which is pretty great. Oh, hey, Drew. Uh, let's 
Two things about these spinners. The date markings on them lead me to believe these were previously manufactured spinners and they had Jeff Fisher. I mean, I could see that. I could see these being repurposed. Like, like I said, uh, you bought a novelty item. You might not have bought a great fidget spinner, but you bought a Jeff Gersman uh, faced fidget spinner. So, in essence, you are getting what you pay for. Um, that's not to excuse poor quality build, right? I'm not excusing bad quality. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, so... I need E. Alright, I need... Uh, so we're building our hand here, which is very fun. Um, this is E. I need E11. Okay, so not this E, but the other E. And... Do that. Uh, he expected it to be a lot worse. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's, you get what you pay for, but I'm sure they, they didn't spend too much time trying to get the best spinners uh, on the market. And they were trying to probably get something that was reasonably priced for what is a goofy gift uh, or purchase. All right, so we got our fingers here. Then what else do I need? I need M6. All right. So if I remember correctly from building this the last time, the other hand, this is kind of annoying. So we're going to take our time with it. Um, I'm not going to rush through putting this hand together because, uh, like I said, it did take a while um, to put together. Uh, and I messed up the fingers several times. So I'm going to go slow with this. We're still early in our stream. Um, so we'll get there. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining me. Um, if you haven't followed me here, if you just follow, if you just follow the links on my Twitter, uh, feel free to give me a follow on Twitch and set your notifications so you know when I'm streaming. I stream Thursdays 8 p.m. Eastern uh, till 9:30 p.m. and then I uh, do Saturday from 9 p.m. Eastern till 10:30 p.m. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me on the stream. Um. We're working on our model kit here. We're getting everything together. Uh, caught up on my anime watching today. Um, watched some stuff this week. Um, Sanrio Boys is starting to get a little sad, which I was expecting there to be some drama in that show. We're getting the drama. Uh, it's still cute and fun, um, but it's uh, it's getting a little real, uh, which is good. Uh, so that's that I am enjoying very much. Um, let's see. Laid back camp. Holy crap. So Thursday's my big anime day because three shows that I'm watching right now come out on Thursday. Uh, so I start with laid back camp. That's uh, immediate. Going to watch that for lunch. Uh, that's my lunch show because that show rules. Um, so, uh, this episode five, um, caught up in anime. Yeah, I mean, I usually watch stuff uh, straight through. Omri's, you know, you know that Laid Back Camp is the cutest dang thing. So there's, right now, we've got Tandem Camping. We've got uh, Rin, who's our solo camper. She's driving her uh, little scooter, because she got her license to drive a scooter. So she goes really far, and it's probably too far, and she's doing some solo camping. Meanwhile, the Outdoor Club, well, they got it, they got it together, they figured it out. Uh, they're doing their first camping trip together, and there's a montage in this episode of them just, like, getting ready and getting the night stuff done that legitimately made me tear up because their new friendship is so great. Uh, and then meanwhile, Nadesco uh, and uh, Rin are, like, texting each other uh, about their trip, and that's how their friendship is developing. Um, and it's just... Whew! I mean, it's just so chill. And as far as um, slice of life goes, like, I, you know, there might be something. There might be some real to it. It might have a moment of being more than just a silly show. But honestly, right now, it's so sweet and pure and nice and just about, like, young friendship and, like, the thing that I, I, I've been saying when I've talked about it, obviously, is like, oh, it's about camping. It's fun. I learned something in this episode. Uh, there's a fire technique I've never seen before, a campfire technique that I learned. Um, but the number one thing about the show is, to me, is that, like, this 
young, the main character Nadesco, um, is just she wasn't into camping, but she met someone who was into camping, and Rin's enthusiasm about it rubs off on her, and so she gets invested in it because like she saw someone like something so much and wanted to know more about it, and then she met other people really into it, and she's now super into it. Uh, because she like found a thing and it's just sweet and wonderful. I can't recommend recommend it enough. The first episode is on YouTube. Uh, the whole episode is on there. So you can watch that if you don't have Crunchyroll. Uh, or I don't know if it's available in your region. Obviously, I don't know about all the regions when it comes to that stuff. But uh... oh, Recreators is now on uh, Prime instead of Strike. Yeah, that seemed okay. I've heard not great things about how that wraps up. Oh, we got here. Uh, Will Smith is hosting. Thank you, Will. Um, if you watch uh, Awful Squad, which is Polygon's um, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds uh, stream, uh, Will Smith was on there this week, and it was very fun to have uh, my friend Will on a show that I watch. He does a bunch of stuff that I watch that he's in, but it's nice. I like it. Um, anyway, so laid back camp rules. And then I just finished watching right before the stream. Another show called how to keep a mummy, which I talked about on the stream before. Uh, this episode was great because it gave some backstory a little bit. It, um, it helped justify the world. So if you haven't seen, uh, how to keep a mummy, I've talked about it on the stream, but in case you, you missed it, uh, how to keep a mummy is a show where like this guy, kid this dude uh gets a gift from his dad it's a giant coffin he opens the coffin and tied tiny little mummy like this big little mummy person named uh, that he names mikun uh and he becomes friends with mikun like immediately like he's weirded out by it but it's mostly like hey why are you here not like wait little creatures exist and are real and are part of our world like there's not a lot of like wait what it's mostly just like Oh, okay. Um, and I thought that was just like, maybe that's this dude and his friends are like that. In the second episode, you meet uh, his roommate and she's like, oh, I've met people like uh, Mikun before. And you're like, okay. But I didn't quite understand what was going on. But this is, in this episode, they talk about how apparently there are like de little demons and monsters and Oni that exist in the world and that some... Uh, kids can see them and are nice. And apparently there's like a network of like people you, you tell, like if you met someone nice, you like the monsters, like tell other monsters about like nice kids that exist that might help them out. Uh, which now makes a lot more sense. Cause at the time I was like, why is everyone cool with this little mummy? Why is no one freaked out? And it's because they have experienced it before. So that was kind of cool. Um, I dropped one of these fingers. I'm going to see if I can find it. Uh, I might just... Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I can't see it immediately. I'm going to look for that finger later. We're just going to keep going. Uh, we dropped the finger, um, but we will uh, endeavor to continue, and I will shove that finger in there later. Uh, so anyway, um, it's a good show. I really like... Uh, I really enjoy it so far. Um, let's see here. So this goes like this. I think this goes on here like that. So anyway, yeah, How to Keep a Mummy. Um, very into that show. Um, recommend it. It's very cute and fun. Um, and then there's a little, a uh, little Oni guy shows up. A little Oni friend shows up. Uh, to one of the main characters to hang out. So that was very cool and fun. Because then you get to see Mikun hang out with a tiny little person. Little demon thing. Uh... Oh, cool. Uh, which, uh, if you don't mind me asking, Johnny, which JoJo are you watching? Because there, uh, there are a bunch of shows. Are you starting with, like, a bunch of people I know started with Diamond is Unbreakable. Um, because that was, like, the later show and featured characters they'd seen in, like, video games and such and, and manga. Oh, 
Not that Will Smith is following me. Thank you, Will. Appreciate that. Thank you for the follow. Uh, you've been hosting and not following, I see. All right. Um, I love JoJo. Um, the later season uh, is also very good. Season after that, the fourth season. Um, I mean, all the seasons are cool. I think, you know, I, I guess I prefer stands to just like their different uh, abilities. I think with the, when the stands come into play, that makes for a better show. Um, if I had to, if I had to put a fine point on it, um, I think Jojo really kicks off when you, when we start getting into stands. Cause that's just like opens up the door to a lot more interesting characters and creativity. Uh, yes, Will, thank you for the follow. Uh, appreciate that. And hello, great job on awful squad. I was saying in the chat, uh, that you did, you were really fun on there. Um, the uh, the squad stuff they did uh, they usually do more like hunting and, and kind of different stuff with the squads this one was much more of a weird experiment but um, the custom squad stuff is one of my favorite parts of uh, Polygon's coverage of PUBG because um, even like uh, Kate Stark her custom stuff is usually just like a bunch of people that watch her you know in the chat playing it's not usually she's not doing weird rules so I, I enjoy that part yeah the race was fun um and also griffin wasn't there to be telling people what to do which is great because i think uh you would you know he's a born leader but you're an actual leader when it comes to that particular game so it would have been it would have been kind of interesting to see what would happen uh if the two of you were there um but it was still very fun uh, anyway, so we were talking about anime. Um, watching the first one available on Crunchyroll, Tale of the Ark, uh, New York. Oh, yeah. That era JoJo. Yeah. The Stardust Crusader stuff is really cool. It's all great. I mean, I love JoJo. Uh, it's such a great show. Uh, I like how Sirius Russ took getting everyone in line on all of us gone. Yeah. Um, well, I think with Russ, like, I don't, I don't know Russ super well. I, I know him fairly well. Uh, not super well, but it, it seemed like he was so close to having it actually work and so happy it was going to work that he wasn't going to let it get messed up because, uh, you know, best laid plans and all that. Sometimes you're like, this is going to work. And then you're like, oh, it didn't. OK, um, but it seemed like he ha it was his best bet to get that silliness actually started. Uh, that he was very insistent on it working. Uh did I do this wrong? Uh, okay. Um, just sorry about this, folks. Here, short delay while I try to get this working out right. Great. Okay, figured out the piece I needed there. Uh, there's a lot of steps involved in the hands here, so it's. Uh, I apologize. It's taking a little slower. Um, but yeah, Alpha Squad's one of one of my weekly shows that I enjoy watching quite a bit. Um. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very fun show. So what do I do wrong here? Uh, okay, got that. Nope, this is... Okay, so I think I fucked something up here. We'll figure this out real quick. Uh, as always, this is my first perfect grade in years. So I am, being, I am telling myself that I am okay with screwing up now and again. Um, but we definitely messed something up here. Basically, we put the hand on wrong. So we're going to separate it. We're going to use um, this, uh, which is not a separator. It's a Phillips screwdriver. I do need to get a separator like they take apart uh, iPhones with. Um, a little plastic thing. Um, that's on my list of things that I need to purchase to make uh, my life easier when it comes to this stuff. But we can still separate pretty easily with the Phillips. 30 and 30 milliliters in the show. Yeah, I know. I can't believe you missed out. It's only the one and was not there. All right. So we're now going to put this hand on right. We're going to do it the right way. Um, which took no time at all, but just slowed us down. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So we're getting our hand together. Like I said, I, I dropped the finger there. I'm going to pick it up a little later. All right. So now we need 
two more quick steps and then we will be ready to fully assemble our kit here our arm and our other arm will be done which is awesome um let's find b1 and we already have that we just gotta find b1 all right you can invite me back Shervo. <laughs> uh it's such a there was so much uh, for those that didn't watch it there were there was so much studio 60 talk um so funny uh that show it was kind of mentioned how like no one was having a good time like none of the characters in the show were having a good time making it and how like it's like even even snl which is like cutthroat and i have a little knowledge of the show a little you know of friends who've written for it and acted on it and been on it it's stressful but there's still times where everyone laughs and has a good time and that was the number one thing about that show that always bothered me was that no one on that show was excited to be on there and there are clearly people like that in real life who are like on snl and miserable but like none of the none of the staff of studio 60 was like excited about writing on a comedy show and that sound i was like no nah, come on there are some people that are very happy to be there come on oh yeah Uh, I am in the camp of people that watches that program that is happy that Justin isn't constantly playing guitar every time he dies now. Uh, I don't miss the guitar. I think at first it was very funny, but then it became like actively annoying to me, but I'm only speaking for myself. But I'm but also like L.A. writers. So there are L.A. writers rooms where people are just like, there to work a job like there are a lot of people i know that work on network shows that are just there for a paycheck and they're done by three in the afternoon and they go home and they you know pick their kids up from school and that's their life and it's just another job and they happen to be writing comedy but like they also laugh and have a good time and see people they like and talk to you know whatever they still have fun doing it it's just that show was so lifeless. Uh, and then also like, hey, there's a reason why you only saw the bad sketches on the uh, the show within the show on 30 Rock. Like anytime they cut to anything, it's one-off jokes. It's a, or a thing that didn't go well. On 30 Rock, they were, ne they were never about how funny the show within the show was because that's hard. You like... Yeah, like, that's hard to do, so they just didn't do it, which I always appreciate it. Uh, coming to writers in New York seem to be very excited about being fresh, funny people. People in L.A. who write comedy or as a Paul Jackman. Yeah, I mean, I could also, that that might be totally true. You might be fair. That might be fair. Um, I think also because L.A. is such more of an industry town, they're like, I'm sorry, I write for a TV show. You've heard this before. Where in New York, it's a little bit like, wait, how there's only like five of those jobs. How would you get one of those? Uh, so that might be it. Um, I don't know. The, my LA friends who, who work in the business, uh, for the most part, are still pretty excited about doing that, which is nice. All right. So we finished our arms here. I'm going to put that there. We've got two arms done, which is awesome. This feels like real progress. This is our third night of our build of this perfect grade, which is nonsense and unbelievable that we're doing it. So happy that we're working on such a nonsense great kit. Um, we're going to work on the feet next. We're moving on to the feet. There will be some screws to deal with here. Um, and we're going to be working on them in tandem. So we're going to work on both at the same time because they are basically identical, which is great because that is like, oh, you do a step here, you do a step there. It does feel like a lot of progress. So two PEs. We're going to get a rubber out here. Um, ba -ba -ba. this is not really in alphabetical order. It kind of is, but not really. Uh, yeah, so there's some screws and, and yeah, there's so many. I mean, I showed these before, but like, there's just so many little baggies for this. It's unbelievable how much I have to build, uh, how many tiny, tiny, uh, screws and such are in this piece, uh, this build, but it's a big, big, uh, model kit.
unfinished thought. All right, gentlemen. Yeah, you know. Uh, all right, so we did that. We're gonna put this here. We're gonna put that there. We're going to. So yeah. So now we're just uh, we're basically gonna set aside some pieces because we're we're gonna be doing this stuff in tandem. So I'm picking out pieces one at a time. Uh, that goes like that. That goes like that. And then we need S and we need L. So we will put this aside there. And let's get our sheets. Um, S, if I remember correctly, is S is our fake chrome. Nope, it's not fake chrome. S is see as you start to do these, you start to learn what the what the sheets look like. S is this one here. Got it. S is some uh, pieces here, very short little piece there. Uh, sheet, I should say. And then we need L, and then we're going to need V and R. So take R out there. We'll take out V, because we'll need that in a minute. And L. This is where an assistant would be incredible. You imagine me having an assistant on one of these shows, like getting my sheets ready, looking ahead on the kit. I, I can't. I, I, that, that would be unnecessary. I don't need that. Uh, yes. So LA and San Francisco are not the same city, Johnny, but that's totally okay. Believe me, there are also plenty of tech jerks in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the nice thing about this, Will, is the two camera setup is because I'm not running a video game, like, uh... I can run two webcams at a pretty decent rate, uh, you know, 30 frames, um, and it's uh, it works out pretty well. I've got two of the same cameras, two of these Logitechs, um, uh, and then I've got one on a tall, you know, tall tripod, one on a little tiny tripod. Um, it's essential for this kind of thing. When I was running this show off of my laptop, I could have used the webcam on the laptop, but the angle would have been weird, so I didn't use that. But yeah, uh, that's kind of been essential to this process as being able to to do both these things. Um, all right, so let's do 32 and 33. These are, these are, this is L, these sheets are identical. So when you do on one, you do on the other. So easy enough. And like I said, we're going to do it in tandem. Um, I think I got through all the anime talk I want to do before. Uh, I'm excited that Dan and Jeff are both going to watch Dragon Ball Kai. Um, Dragon Ball Kai is the later release, uh, like a re-release of Dragon Ball Z, where they um, they trimmed down a bunch of stuff. It's like uh, a little better looking, and for the most part, the main difference is that they trimmed down a bunch of episodes and took out a bunch of stuff. It's like, it's still a lot of episodes. But, uh, you know, I got a soft spot in my heart for Dragon Ball Z. It's one of the first shows I ever went out of my way to fan sub and see all because, you know, it was on English on television and I really wanted to see it. So, I had to go to fan subs so that I could get my fix. And then we need a knife. So, yeah. Uh, Dan is apparently... All systems Goku, not my term. That is a term that I saw Dan use. Uh, Dan is giving anime a shot because, well, one, as, as hopefully everybody knows, everyone is exaggerating on the internet, including myself. Uh, everyone is playing a version. Everyone who plays themselves on the internet is just playing a version of themselves. So Dan doesn't fucking hate anime like he says he does. He just, in one, in this particular instance, like, it's funnier if he's, like, mad about anime than if he wasn't. Uh, because, you know, also Dan hated things. So it's easy to say he hates anime because he likes cool guy stuff. Uh, as opposed to the fact that he likes Metal Gear, which is some anime-ass anime. And he knows that. He's totally aware that he likes anime. Um, I love the idea that anyone's just like, man, I forgot about Dragon Ball. Like, they're playing Dragon Ball uh, Fighters Z, and they're like, oh, yeah, what, what, am I, what am I doing? I've been missing out on anime and, and Dragon Ball. Like, I love that. Um, I would recommend Dragon Ball Super to people. Dragon Ball Super is pretty good. It takes a little while to get awesome. 
Uh, Dragon Ball Super is basically, uh, they say basically GT didn't exist, which was the sequel to Z, and instead this is the show. Uh, for good or bad, because there were some good in, in GT. There's some terrible mistakes in GT. Um, so, uh, Gohan is basically like a little bit of Goku. But the reason there's Goten is people got real mad at Akira Toriyama for like aging up Goku. They were just like, we want more Goku. We want little kid Goku, like Dragon Ball Goku. So that's why he's D. That's why Goku is de-aged in GT and is basically has a kid body again and then starts acting like a kid, because it's just mostly like, uh, just fucking be a kid. Uh, that's what the people want. And he's like, oh, the people want that. Well, then I'll give it to them, and it's kind of a dick move, which I love. Drew, here's the thing. The nice thing about Dan, particularly Dan and Jeff, certainly. Uh, and, and anybody that's been on the internet a while is, yes, people will tell them the right way to do things. But also, they've been playing video games for long enough on the internet that people tell them what to do the right way to play video games all the time. Like, I'm sure that most of Giant Bomb's footage for Monster Hunter has been met with either, oh, this seems cool, or you're playing it wrong. You should do this. You're playing the wrong, those are the wrong weapons. Like, they're used to that. So hopefully people, like, I assume they're taking everything with a grain of salt. Uh, and also, yeah, and then, like, at a certain point, you just have to, like, not give a shit. But, like, you know, sometimes you have to be like, oh, maybe I'm not approaching this the right way. Um, it's very easy to decide that you don't like something. Uh, it, it That's a very easy thing. It's a very tough thing to be ready, willing, and able to invest in something that you're not sure about. Oh, hey, Zorbs. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, and that's with anything, right? Like, um, you know, I, my methods when it comes to, to video gaming is usually just like, what's fun and wh how do I want to play it? So I play things on easy. You know, I play Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein was hard enough because it's poor, because the, uh, Encounters are poorly designed. So they didn't do a great job making the game fun to shoot things in. So I put it to easy. So it's more fun to shoot things. And I min-max it. That's just how I like to play. Um, you know, like, I'm not recommending it for everybody. That's just how I enjoy playing that particular game. Uh... Other people probably love the challenge of it. I turned the challenge up on Doom, uh, the re most recent Doom. I played, I was jumping between uh, difficulties because at a certain point it became a fun challenge to kind of tweak the difficulty and see how well I did. But I know that's not for everybody, and I'm not trying to be here for saying it's for everybody the way I played it. Uh, all right, so we're working on the feet here. We're going to break out our feet pieces here. Uh, I've been trying to force myself to play new games without min-maxing, and you ruin Prey as a result. Uh, so wait, Will, did you ruin Prey by not min-maxing, and then you were uh, stuck? Or did you ruin Prey by min-maxing? Started on hard and lowered it down. It wasn't fun. Yeah, Zorbs, I wasn't having any fun with Wolfenstein. Um... Like, I loved a lot about it, but actually, like, getting through some of the game, I just wasn't having a good time. Uh, I ruined Ray by not min-maxing and getting stuck. Yep, that can happen. Um, I certainly did that with the first relaunch of... Because I don't remember the subtitles of it, but... Um, uh, Deus Ex. Well, not this last one, the one before it. The, the first of the new Deus Exes. I went stealth... Uh, I specced fully stealth instead of, like, specking... Because that's how I wanted to play. And then I got to bosses where they could see me. And I did not have rocket launcher skills. So I couldn't beat them. And it sucked ass. I was so mad about how bad that game got because I wasn't, like... I just didn't have the... I wasn't playing it, quote-unquote, the right way. Ugh. Made me so angry. I'm going to trim this up a little bit here, clip this a little bit. 
Uh, if you want a version of Doom 16, the most true Doom 1, 2, you want a difficulty one step of all. I think that's about where I play. Uh, Will, I'm sorry you ruined uh, uh, you ruined Prey for yourself. Um, that's a game I never finished, but I was liking what I played. Um, oh, and then I need to... Uh, this has got a cool... Um, there's. I'm going to be putting a... Uh, a uh, nut in in the base of this uh, foot, and then I'll screw it in later, which is kind of kind of cool. This is the bag of nuts in there. Just pull one of these out. We got to pull two out because I need two of them. Just remembered because we're doing two feet at once. So. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that'll go in there. Yep. Uh, I'll revisit it soon enough. Yeah, I mean, my RPG play style is um, I'm fine with looking up quests. Uh, Wiki is particular. I am totally fine with doing that. Uh, I've been slowly, slowly, slowly playing through Fallout 4. Um, I just, because I got a gift card to, to GameStop, which I don't love as a company, but, you know, I got a gift card to it, so I'm going to use it. But uh, I got a gift card to them, and so I went and got, uh, I just online got the, uh, one of the DLCs. And so I've been playing through that, but I, like, read ahead to see, like, what does this quest entail? What do I need to know? Uh, so I don't trick, I don't get stuck. While I'm playing it. Um, like. I can find some cool power armor. Uh, so don't bring power armor. Because then you'd have to like figure out how to get it. You'd have to come back for it. So that was cool to know. That there was like a really. Really incredibly great set of power armor. Uh, in this DLC. So I. When I went to one of the locations. I didn't bring power armor with me. Which was like good to know. Oh yeah, breaking the game is pretty fun. Uh, um, yeah, like once you like um, once you know a game really well, it is it can be very fun to just go in knowing exactly how to min max it, know what all the answers are to the things that are going to come up, and and play it like that. I've certainly done that before. All right, so we did that. Let's do it on the other side here. I'm gonna put this on here. Uh. Yeah, my, uh, cause I played Fallout New Vegas like a dozen times. I really loved it. I I liked three a lot, but New Vegas. I don't know if it was the setting or the characters or what, uh, or my then crush on Felicia Day, uh, or what whatever it was. I really fell in love with that game, and I. Uh, so I played a lot of it, um, and then eventually it was just like, I'm going to have a perfect ending. I'm going to do everything I want to do. I'm going to side with the NCR, but make sure they take care of the followers and that they leave these people alone and these people are cool and make sure that the uh, cliff dweller people uh, get out safely in the commotion and like have the Legion come in and help me out, but then also leave for that becomes a problem. Like everyone's going to stay alive. Like I got very good at keeping my friends alive in that game. Yeah. All the faction stuff was very cool. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So let's, we're going to uh, finish working on, or keep working on our legs here. Uh, it's eight fifty. All right. So I'm going to finish up the uh, the legs here, and then I'm going to take a break uh, and start, you know, not a break break, but just like take a moment to talk about what's going on with me and, you know, plug all my stuff. Uh, I'll say this now. I'll put links in there. Um, I haven't been talking about it until a little bit. Um, I'm going to Emerald City Comic Con for the first time. Um, never been to before. Obviously been to Seattle, been to that convention center for PAX, but never been for Emerald City. Um, I'm going... Uh, Saturday night, I'll be running a panel, uh, which is uh, Oni Comics. Uh, we are presenting a game of Secret Hitler, 
with uh, some awesome people uh, that make comics for that either uh, do art for or write for uh, comics for Oni. Um, people that made uh, that make the Rick and Morty cartoon or comic. Sorry, the Rick and Morty book. Uh, that would do Invader Zim, that Scott Pilgrim, people that publish all those things. So it's going to be real good. Um, that's uh, and then on Sunday uh, afternoon, of course, I'll put links in the in the chat in a minute. Um, I will uh, be working on um, a, a friendshipping panel. So I'm very excited about that. Um, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, Jen and Trin are doing a friendshipping panel. And I am thrilled to be a part of that um, because they are the best in the business. And uh, yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm so glad that they asked me to uh, to help out and be on their panel. That'll uh, possibly be on their feed. It might not be. Um, I am working on getting the uh, Secret Hitler panel films. I'll also be there with Oni to do um, some YouTube videos for their YouTube channel. Some quick like interviews with people, stuff like that. That'll all be up on there and I'll have links to it um, when that goes up. It looks like we're probably going to do a video a day. That's the hope anyway. You never know. Just do some interviews. Stuff like that. It's stuff I've wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Will. Uh, I went out there because uh, Char Charlie Chu uh, of Oni and, and James of Oni were like Hey, we, we think you'd be good for this uh, as hosting and stuff like that, um, which, you know, I will be good at. I'll say that. I'm going to do a real good job with it. But, um, they, yeah, we've been talking about doing this for a while. And this is, um, even though they're Portland-based, Emerald City is kind of their home turf uh, instead of Rose City. I don't know why, but Emerald City is kind of like their home base uh, convention. So, oh, that's cool. This is pretty cool. Um there's a lot of uh, a lot of bend here on these legs. It's very cool. Um, uh, anyway, so yeah, so they uh, so they're gonna bring me out for that. So that's in March. Um, uh, one of the things that will will happen for the stream is um, I won't have live streams that week. Uh, I'm gonna fly out on Wednesday. Uh, I might do something Monday or Tuesday of that week as like a I have a month to figure that out as like a hey I'm I'm still kind of here i might just do a bonus thing that week um but what'll happen is um in the thursday and saturday days i'll put up on youtube um i'm gonna do sometime this month in february because it's february pay your rent pay your rent everybody if you haven't uh if you pay on the first you should please pay your rent uh so that you have a place to live still um if you're a rent paying person uh Okay, so we're going to do two of these. This is part of the legs here. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I... Um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, I'm going to film some stuff. Like, just me in front of cameras, just like we do here. But instead of streaming, I'm just going to film, and I'll do a build. Just so I have something that goes up that weekend while I'm doing other things. Because I'm staying in a hotel, so uh, I don't believe I'll have good internet. Um... So I uh, I can't live stream while I'm there like I did it unplugged. I love 90% of Mark the Ninja. Yeah, Johnny, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I love Stealth and DXX. I think they do a really good job uh, with the stealth stuff. I love like breaking into computers of your coworkers and getting in there, hacking and stealthing. That's how I play that game. Uh, also... Uh, how I solved the problem of I specced wrong because I couldn't take out the big enemies was uh, I found out that um, uh, I, I didn't use a trainer or anything. I didn't use like uh, a cheat engine or anything like that. But there was a way to unlock the debug uh, menu in the game and turn on cheats they had used in debug to test out different like settings and stuff. So someone figured out how to like reverse engineer that so that you could just use them. Uh, so I just cheated to get through the big bosses, uh, that I couldn't beat after like, you know, three or four failed attempts. And then I went back to just doing stealth. This was like, all right, well, I'm going to turn on all these weapons and give myself, uh, upgrades to all these weapons and then turn it all off. All right. So that's 22 and 23. 
and 22 and 23. Um, so yeah, so that's the plans for, for March. Um, February, I'm still going to do a Patreon video, a Q and a video for everybody that, uh, backs my Patreon, which I'm about to link to. Um, my goal is to hit $150 and be able to stream three times a week at 150. I will be able to definitely do that. Um, because the income will be such that I'll be able to stream when I need to. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to hit that soon. Um, and, uh, that third stream will be a Monday stream. It would be like a Monday afternoon, um, so that I can do some afternoon streaming and I'm not just streaming in the evening. Um, cause, uh, with my work schedule, that's the best I can do. Uh, so yeah, so I would love to do that. That's if I hit my $150, um, which we're going to talk about in just a second. I'm going to put this together and then I'm going to take a pause for the cause and, uh, promote all my stuff. I did this wrong. I did this upside down. So, got to undo this. Messed it up. Fixing it right now. Uh, yeah. Okay. And put that there. And do. Oops. Nope. Did this wrong. The nice thing about doing these twice, you know, when they're identical on both sides is... As soon as I figure out why I was messing it up the first time, the second one goes much smoother. But anyway, it's uh, just about 9 p.m. we got another half an hour of the stream. So this is the perfect time for me to start linking things in the chat. Of course, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, hello. Thanks for watching on YouTube. I appreciate it. Uh, got these long videos, so getting people to watch those is hard. Um... So here is my Patreon. Like I said, uh, it hey, it's, it's February 1st. Great day to join my Patreon. If you haven't yet, $5, you get uh, archives of all my video stuff bef but the night before everyone else does, always before everybody else. Um, and uh, $10 gets to vote. So when this is done in a couple weeks, you'll be able to vote on what kit I make next. I got three kits waiting in the wings, and the $10 backers will get to vote on that. $10 supporters. Uh, here's my Amazon wish list if you want to buy anything. If there's ever, ever anything on there that you would like, oh, you know, hey, they sell this on Amazon. Pat, I'd love to buy this for you. You know, let me know. Uh, Twitter.com slash Pat Bear. Um, if it's something that would be cool for the stream, I'd always be willing to put it up there. And if you're like, ah, I can't, you know, every once in a while it'd be cool to give you like two bucks, but I can't really do anything more than that. Like $3, like the price of a cup of coffee. Well, I've got a coffee. Uh, or Ko-Fi. I never learned how to say it. Any money that comes to that goes through my PayPal, goes to, into an account that I just used to buy model kits and stuff. I've got a few things up there. I got like a um, uh, a few different things that would help me stream better, uh, a better microphone that's wireless, so that I wouldn't be dealing with this. That was a uh, highly rated. A few other things that would like help me in my streams, but none of it's necessary. Um, give me a follow if you haven't given me a follow yet. If you're interested in subscribing, we're at 32 subscribers right now. If you got your Twitch coin, remember, link your Amazon Prime uh, with Twitch so you have Twitch Prime. Even if you don't use your free Twitch token with me every month, use it for whoever. But you should have Twitch Prime because you don't see ads anymore. So you can turn Adblocker off and it counts as if you are watching it. So it's awesome for people like... Um, but can you buy coffee for model kits? All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, Johnny. Uh, point take it. No, no. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, it would help me a lot. Uh, but you should have Twitch Prime anyway, because I don't rad. You know, I don't. You know, take ad breaks. I'm not a partner. I'm an affiliate right now. I am uh, hoping part of the reason why the Patreon goal is to hit um, to hit three times a week is just try to get my numbers up so that I can uh, apply for partner. I have not applied for partner yet because uh, I'm waiting to try to do uh, three times a week before I go for it because um, that would open up some doors for me and be very cool. Um, but yeah, uh, that's about it. And let me put, um, before we get back into it, let me just put this information here. Here's stuff about Emerald City Comic Con. Um, I don't believe any of it's going to be streamed. Um or recorded. As we recorded. Hopefully uh, we'll record Secret Hitler. I don't know if we're going to 
do anything with how to do how do I Cuban, which is uh, the French shipping podcast panel. Um, but that's not my panel, so I'm not trying to tell them what to do. But that's it. Let's get back into the streaming um, right now. Let's go back to this. Okay, so we got uh, we're gonna do our feet stuff. So we find H. This is getting disorganized, but we're only here for another half an hour, so I'm okay with that. Um, our big old feet, which are red, like you do. But yeah, if you're going to be at Emerald City Comic Con, those are the two panels that I'm doing. I'm going to do some video stuff. I'll, of course, promote that. Twitter.com slash Pat Bear is my Twitter account. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'd love to uh, grow out that Patreon. I know I kind of talk my, people's ears off about it. I uh, apologize for doing that. But um, I just really want to uh, be able to continue to, to grow the channel. Um, get my subscription numbers up. That kind of stuff. And it all goes back into me building. Like, that's the whole thing is I'm doing this all so that I can keep... Uh... Thanks, Will. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, enjoy your dinner. Say hi to the family for me. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming to the chat. Very nice. Um, yeah, mostly I, I just want to, you know, keep being able to do this. I really do genuinely enjoy building on stream and, and chatting with y'all. It's very fun. I, uh, what we got going on here? Oh, thank you for the follow, uh, Richard Buttkiss. Uh, oh, wow. So I take it dip. Dick butt kiss was taken, huh? Okay. I see you, Richard. I see I see what you're about. I get you. I don't uh, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm getting a little um a little silly here, which is uh not unlike me, but you know. Uh I didn't get a lot of sleep this week. I was very busy. Um this is the uh getting to be a busier time of year. Um um, there is a thing. So, for industry professionals in the world of comedy, the Just for Laughs Festival is very important. Uh, it's in Montreal. There's a lot of industry goes there. And there aren't a lot of chances for comedians. Like, stand-up comedians, like, have a lot of avenues for them. But comedians that do, like, character work or do sketches, uh, those types of performers uh, have it a little have it a little different. Uh, have it a little rougher. Um, those kind of actor characters work people. Uh, so for them, Just for Last is really important uh, as a festival. And uh, so auditions for that are coming up. And so I have a bunch of extra shows for that, getting people ready. I'm not try I'm not auditioning for it. That's not my thing. But I have uh, friends who are, and I've been working hard on my day job, which is obviously a night, to get stuff ready for that. So I had some extra work this week because of that, which was fine. I'm happy to do it. Always happy to do it. Uh, I want my friends to succeed in this world. Um, I, was, I wasn't I was joking at all about how I feel about him, but um, okay, so we did that. We're working on the, the leg there. Let's do the other side of that. I'll kind of come in on the camera here, make it so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Um, uh, Jen uh, from Friend Shipping, Jen Bain, uh, tweeted a photo because she was going to see John Mulaney in concert. Uh, stand-up show. Not in concert, but stand-up. Uh, and I got to say, like, here's the inside dirt. John's a real good dude. Uh, which is true. John Mulaney, uh, if I might use this terminology, one of the good ones. John is a great dude. John has a joke that sucks. He's got one joke on his albums that I think is, like, fucking lame as shit. Um... But otherwise, great dude. But we all have problematic stuff. Um, we all, you know, everyone is, no one is without problematic. Uh, which is not the right way to say that. But you know what I mean. Um, Mulaney has a joke about how you don't see a crew of all female um, bank robbers because they would all be too catty. And it's like the lamest joke. It's really terrible. And it, like, I skip it when I listen to the, that album because it's so, like, baseless and, like, not even his, like, I'm like, why is this on the album? Why did you, why didn't someone say, hey, this isn't funny? Like, what, what is this? Why are you doing this? It's, like, it's such a weird thing. 
an otherwise like brilliant album has like just one joke that not only will it not age well, it didn't start well. Like it's just gonna be more and more shitty, and like it's that joke. It'll be a joke where he'll well, so eventually he'll be like, yeah, I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, at the time it did well, and it'd be like, no, it didn't. It didn't do well at the time. Um, but yeah, that's a joke that already hasn't aged. Uh, which is a bummer because otherwise Mulaney is like a really funny dude and just a great guy. Uh, my, one of my John Mulaney uh, anecdotes that I'll share because I don't want to go too far into talking about the dude um, is that John um, interned at the UCB Theater here in New York at our Chelsea location when we still had that location. Um, John interned um, and wasn't taking classes. He had done some performance. He was uh, at the point where he was a stand-up getting gigs on the weekends but not traveling too far and just wanted to kind of do more stuff with the theater and be around the theater more. So John, that was why John, like, um, all right, make sure I'm doing this right. Sorry, I'm going to stop for a second. Okay. So John interned just to kind of, like, be part of the theater for more because he had a lot of friends there and he done some stuff there but never, like, gone through the class system. Uh and it was just like such a just a solid great guy. I can't say enough good things about John, with the exception of, like I said, that one bad album. And yeah, yeah, Drew, you bring that up. Yeah, I mean part of it is that it's it's a it's a moment in time, right? Like we are gonna be disappointed by some some people's jokes. Uh because, you know, we grow and we change. Like sometimes people look at things and they're just like, this is rough. And sometimes it's like we changed as a society. So like, hey, this joke has ableist language in it. That fucking sucks. Hey, you were not doing that at the time to be a dick. You weren't trying to be hurtful and awful. But now in hindsight, we know that that's lame and shitty. Uh, and now you know, but you weren't trying to do that at the time. Or, you know, you you were doing name calling or whatever. Like, this isn't punching up at all. Like, you know that we we grow and change and it's weird that comedians have like this like weird time capsule of their lives um and sometimes it's just like jen kirkman has an has three albums uh she's got more i think but she's got three albums where the first album dating a dude she's gonna get married to second album married to the dude plenty of jokes about that third album jokes about the divorce and jokes about being single because she tells jokes based on her real life we if you listen to those albums you go on a journey of her relationship and you follow that relationship and it's so bizarre uh i can't remember the comedian that used to have this but they had a joke where they would they would do all those jokes and they go okay so we broke up a year ago but those jokes are still good so sorry and then they would go on and do other things. But they were, like, not ready to give up the jokes about a person just because they weren't dating anymore. Um, I love that. Uh, I've also watched uh, a friend of mine, Kara, uh, had a lot of jokes that were about her boyfriend. Now they're married. So she's got marriage jokes, but she still does the jokes that were that are about her boyfriend. She just changes the, the language of it, which I think is really funny. All right. Let's see here. Mm, Drew, I hear you. Um, Paul F. Tompkins talked about this. Uh, okay, so we did our feet, and I don't want to get started on a new thing because we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to chat with you all for a little bit, then we're going to wrap up a little early because um, it's the finals in a tournament that I help run for my job, and I want to get to that a little earlier than I normally would. So we're actually not going to go all the way to 930. Uh, but I want to talk about this now because we brought it up, but then we'll uh, we'll go on about our days. Um and our battle business. Uh, let's see if I can do... I'll do... I'll wrap this up. I'll do um, the kind of final thoughts here while I finish the feat. And then we'll go from there. Um, so, uh, PC culture stuff. So, a lot of comedians that complain about that, about the audiences and safe spaces and all that. One, they're probably older. And it wasn't that... Everyone laughed at their bad jokes then and don't laugh now. It's that no one complained about it. So a lot of times they didn't have an avenue to complain. 
jokes still hurt people in the 80s and the 90s and the er, and the aughts. Jokes devastated people. Jokes about their way of life that dismissed it. Uh, so many of Louis C.K.'s jokes are mean to people and they're self-deprecating so they were excusable to a certain demographic but they were still mean there were still a lot of jokes that were just like at the expense of a bunch of people who in the last few years have been able to uh, voice their opinions loudly and it's been great for them and incredibly necessary and as soon as people started to Kind of like the first pullback was about blogs. Oh man, some stand-ups fucking hated blogs. They hated opinion pieces. They hated all that stuff because you could say one writer in one town that gave you a bad review of your show didn't get it. But if there was an LA blogger going to all these shows and writing their honest opinions about the sets, like you couldn't really ignore that. You had to be like, oh man, there's, there's this one person out there that just doesn't like what I do. Uh, and you couldn't really ignore that. Uh, it's hard to ignore that. So I, I think we're at the point now where there are a lot of people who um, who feel like, well, people can't take a joke and you can't say what's on your mind. You can't get real and like talk about the real stuff out there. And it's like, you totally can. Here's the, the real secret is you can talk about anything. You just have to be good. Um... I can't find I, uh, which is what I need to finish this off. I need I, and I can't find it. Um, so I'm looking right now for I, which I cannot find. All right. Uh, yeah, Louis C.K. was a nightmare but because he was quote unquote self-deprecating and truthful. He got away with a lot of shit. Um, all right, so I can't find the I sheet, which I need to finish this off. That's L. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to wrap up there, but basically, uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, here they, here's one of them. Here they are. I found them. Great. Let's just finish that off. Um, yeah, I mean, so one of the things that I always, uh, kind of look at when I'm, when I'm thinking about comics, Paul F. Tompkins talked about a lot. It's like, you know, it's just that the audience has changed and they're not putting up with it. They're not worse. You have to be better. And there's a lot of pushback to that. But, I mean, so Anthony Jeselnik, I'm, I'm going to cough here, sorry. <coughs> uh, um, so, so uh, Anthony Jeselnik is a dark one-liner comic that makes dark, fucked up jokes. And he's a fucked up comedian because he's got a weird brain. And that's what comes out of it. But Anthony Jeselnik is 100% like, okay, this joke is dark. Here's my delivery for it. Whatever. But he's not out there to, like, hate people or to be awful. He's just, like, doing his bit really well. And I, sometimes I don't love it. Sometimes it's too much. Uh, but he's, like, totally, like, aware of what the line is that he might cross. He's incredibly thoughtful about his jokes. And that's what a lot of people who push back, when people boo or don't laugh at their bad jokes, their bad, mean-spirited jokes, it's because it's just there. It's just, you wanted to say the F word as a punchline, and you're mad we didn't laugh at your punchline because we don't love that word. There's a joke you can say with that word in it that I'll give you a chuckle for because you're going to talk about the language of it you're going to talk about the origins of it. You're going to talk about the guy that was saying it and then something happened to it and it ended up being funny. It's not censorship. It's just asking you to be a better person. Like, don't use language as a punchline. Don't use, like, ins like that kind of thing. Like, it's just lame and easy and shitty. Um, lame isn't even a good term. And I apologize for that. It's not a good term. That's a term in my head. Uh, bogus. It's bogus as shit. Um, anyway. Yeah, the free people people think that's censorship. It's just asking you to be better. Like, if you're going to gross me out or you're going to, like, 
you're gonna like really shake me to my core. You gotta work really fucking hard because I've been doing improv since 2004, and I've seen incredibly insane things done sh done incredibly well. And you so you gotta be good because otherwise it's just like I'm not laughing because it sucks. I'm like man, like if you're gonna be hateful, you better be really good at it. Uh, that's a weird thing to say from that. Uh, yeah, that's a real kicker. A lot of times they're just like. Oh, no one laughed at my terrible rape joke. Yeah, it's terrible. Shut up. Um, uh, John Mulaney actually has a very funny uh, bit about um, him fa uh, him falling behind a woman uh, doing a subway transfer. And it, through the course of it, suddenly realizes, oh, she thinks I'm a threat. And he's like, you know, a tiny little skinny man that doesn't see himself as a threat. And the humor is from that. It's from that, like, oh, no, no, I'm a child. I, I'm also scared. Like, but this this valid, valid, because of society, fear this woman has about him. And it's fascinating. And uh, it's actually a really, really strong joke uh, that I point to sometimes when people talk about, like, oh, you're saying you can't joke. But, like, no, no, you just have to be good and thoughtful and not just, like, don't make me, don't make a joke about, like, a predator, a, a sexual predator, if the joke is, can you believe that that happens? Anyway, I got on a tangent there. I have lots of comedy thoughts, as you might be well aware. Uh, but we're going to wrap up. I'm going to go back to this old intro page here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this archive will be up in a couple hours for Patreon backers at $5 plus. Uh, it'll be up on YouTube on uh, uh, tomorrow, Friday. So you'll be able to watch that. All the links will be in the chat. Thank you for joining me back Saturday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to keep working on this. I think we're going to start working on the legs, I think, which is rad, and I can't wait to do that. But I want to thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your uh, uh, Thursday. And, uh, yes, that's, the, that's, the, that's what we'll leave you on. Have a great rest of your night. Goodbye.